What is up, guys? Frugal BC today. I want to talk about all the things that I think people get wrong about crypto. So here is how crypto works and the misconceptions behind crypto. All that on today's Frugal BC. Hey, what's up guys, Frugal BC today. I wanna to talk about how cryptocurrency works and all the misconceptions behind it. I'm really focusing today on the misconceptions behind cryptocurrency because I think there's just a lot of things that people get wrong about cryptocurrency. And so I wanna alleviate some of those things. These are based on things that I've heard. Before we get into that, I'd really love it if you'd smash that subscribe button and uh, hit the like button too if you're so inspired. If you like what we do here and like the videos, um, I'm having a lot of fun. We're doing, we get a lot of subscribers coming in, so I'm really happy about that. So uh, anything you can do to help, if you just want to hit that subscribe button, you can see all our great content about how to make money in crypto and how to work towards financial independence. So <laughs> this kind of goes back to a blog post I made that I shared on the financial independence Reddit forum. And I talked a little bit about the uh, some of the fundamentals behind Bitcoin and why you shouldn't worry about the crash that happened. And someone commented something along the lines of, oh, it's uh, uh, it shouldn't you shouldn't care about Bitcoin because it's just, it's just for criminals and it's basically a scam. And it's like, <laughs> you know, I had to laugh. I, I it's, it's just so funny to me to think that Today, with all the knowledge that is out there about cryptocurrencies, whether you agree with it or not, you don't have to invest. That's fine. But to actually make a statement like that, that's so seeped in ignorance, just cracked me up. So uh, so I actually had that last on my list. But you know what? I'm going to start with that one. Cryptocurrency is just for criminals and money laundering. <laughs> now, I've been watching a lot of crime drama. And I used to, I used to cover crime as a reporter. So I've, I've dealt with a lot of criminal cases dealing with fraud and with, you know, m money crimes are really common. Uh, you'll see those a lot, even at lower or higher levels. Some of them don't even make the paper. You know, there's people who just will just write bad checks because they don't have any money and you kind of feel bad for them, but like at the same time, laws are laws and you have to follow them. So it's, you know, it's kind of a, kind of a tricky world there. But uh, the point I want to make is that I've, I have a lot of knowledge in the, the terms of criminal justice more than probably the average person, not as much as a lawyer, but more than the average person because my time, I spent a lot of time in the courtroom. And, but I also watch a lot of crime documentaries. So I recently watched Cocaine Cowboys. Now, what's the worst thing that can happen to a criminal mastermind? The worst thing is that your ledger book gets found. That's very, very bad. Why is that bad? Well, that's basically a list of all your transactions. If they got that, they have they have you linked to criminal transactions. So the last thing you want is for your ledger to be found. So, how does crypto how does Bitcoin work? Well, Bitcoin is a public ledger that's on the blockchain. So if I use crypto for crime, I'm putting all my transactions in a public blockchain that anyone with knowledge of blockchain technology can use. And guess who Guess who knows how to use that? The FBI <laughs> and other, other criminal justice organizations. They know how this stuff works. They're studying it. So this idea that, that Bitcoin is for criminals and money, la money laundering is just ridiculous. Um, and if you want a good example, the last two major cases that have been big enough, the, the, the biggest hacking cases that have been big enough to capture attention nationally uh, were done on Bitcoin. And they were both caught because they used Bitcoin. One was from a, a finance firm, you know, an online exchange. And then the other was, the other was, uh, had to do with the pipeline, but they used Bitcoin and they were caught because they used Bitcoin. So it's actually the opposite. You'd be a lot better off just using cash or some kind of untraceable fiat currency because your transactions within Bitcoin are cryptographically unique. So I, I don't see that. I don't just see that $10 went up, $10 went down. I see that 
$10 that were linked, th these particular $10 of Bitcoin or whatever, 10 Bitcoin, let's say, are linked to your account and we're part of this criminal transaction with this other person. Like that's easy enough to trace for someone who knows how to work the blockchain and all these organizations are learning it. So, so let's go, let's just get rid of that one. That's stupid. <laughs> uh, let's go to the top one I had at the top. And this, this one really cracks me up. Uh, I just find it really amusing. And the quote was, it's speculation because there are no fundamentals. Someone asked about whether cryptocurrency is an investment or speculation. And someone said, it's speculation. There are no fundamentals. Well, that is fundamentally wrong. Why is that fundamentally wrong? Because just like anything, there's actually quite a bit of fundamentals. Um, Uncomplicated had a great channel a great video about 35 minutes talking about all the ways that you can evaluate the fundamentals of cryptocurrency. So the idea that there are no fundamentals, that, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> it, it's just as bad, if not worse, it's probably worse. I think it's worse than the other, the criminal money laundering comment, because of course there are fundamentals. <laughs> there's fundamentals to everything. It, it wouldn't, there's, there's a whole reason why it functions. Um, now, I kind of want to talk about the speculation part too, because I've also seen it said where, well, this idea of whether it's an investment or a speculation, there's no difference, okay? Or I've, I've seen it uh, instead of speculation, let's use the word gambling, because I've seen that too recently, even more recently. I think I saw it yesterday. Let me be very, very clear. Any type of investment is a gamble. That, that's why you earn rewards. You earn returns because you are risking capital. Okay, now sometimes the risk can be very, very small. Um, I, as you know, I, I came up through the FIRE movement. We talk about index funds and the reason why we like index funds as a good basis. I see it as a basis. Some seems, A lot of them see it as the only thing to use. I think you should get into other stuff besides it, but that should be the foundation. The reason it's a foundation is because it's low risk. But low risk doesn't mean zero risk. Any investment that you make will have a non-zero risk. In other words, there's at least some element of risk, even if it's very, very, very tiny. And so th this is something I want to dispel because when you think about investments, you should always be thinking about in terms of risk and reward. How much am I risking? How, 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 uh, how likely it is, is it that that risk is going to come to bear? And what are the rewards for taking on that risk? So, you know, me personally, I'm always looking for stuff with low downside and high upside. As you know, and I, some people, this might've turned some people off, I don't know, but I put a small amount of money into Shiba recently. Now the idea is the Shiba coin is right now valued at a teeny tiny fraction of a cent and it's been going up, but even so it's still a teeny, just a slightly less teeny tiny <laughs> fraction of a cent. And I only put twenty dollars in. Now, if this thing goes to someday being worth ten or twenty dollars, I will have a significant amount of money. Hell, even if it's worth a penny, that will still be a lot of money. <laughs> okay. Now, the downside is I could lose the tiny amount of money I put into it. So th there's actually a term for this. I learned it, and I can't recall it right now. I want to say it's something like. Uh, low leverage upside or something like that. I need to look at it. I need to find that term again because it's it said exactly, it was a term exactly for what I'm talking about. But anytime I look for an investment, I'm like, what's the downside? What's the risk? And then what's the upside? And that's how you make your evaluation. So people with, so the only difference between crypto and, and say index funds is there's less uh, time horizon to evaluate risk. Like, do I think there's a chance that Bitcoin could go to zero at the end of this year? Sure, there's a chance. There's also a chance that the stock market could go to zero by the end of the year. Now, are either of these likely? No, they're not likely. They're very unlikely. Um, at this point, Bitcoin going to zero ever is, I think, is very, very unlikely because that would mean everybody in the world now thinks it's worth nothing. And that's that would be pretty hard to do, especially with institutional buy-in. Like the, the idea of that happening is, is pretty slim, but it's not impossible. So whenever you hear people talking about stuff like, well, this is a risky investment. Well, all investments are risky to some degree. It's just a matter of how much. So you should always ask yourself, compared to what? 
So that's my that's that's what I'll say about that comment. I think that's a really important principle for everybody to know. And then the last one I'm going to get into, and I saved this one for last because I think it's more important to people who care about the environment. But you'll see, it's not so much a, a matter of like the fundamentals or whether you should invest in crypto or not. But it might be a, it might be a touch point for other people. And I I bring this one up because I think it's the wrong way of looking at it. So. The complaint you hear about crypto is that it's bad for the environment. And right now, they are correct when they say proof of stake um, uses a lot of environmental resources. It's very expensive to mine. It takes a lot of energy, and that energy costs money. It also costs resources. So it's not, it's not wrong in thinking about that. The problem is that they don't really understand what is going on in the crypto space. So Bitcoin works on proof of stake, which means... There are miners who validate transactions, and by validating those, in exchange for validating those transactions and expending energy, that's the work, doing the calculations, they get some reward. They get crypto rewarded for, for doing that. But what a lot of these guys don't understand is Bitcoin is right now kind of the exception because a lot of these coins and most new coins are moving in this direction. They're using, they're operating on proof of stake versus proof of work. Now, what's the difference? Proof of stake operates by, instead of miners with these really expensive uh, graphics cards and, and specific mining rigs, you know, validating these nodes, validating transactions, um, the people who hold the cryptocurrency are validating them instead. So you put money into stake. So I talked about Algorand a lot. That's how Algorand works. Algorand funds the uh, Algorand, but if you're an Algorand holder, you stake some of your coins, you hold it in the wallet. That's all you got to do. It's really simple compared to a lot of them. You just hold on to it. Your coins are being used to validate transactions of other coins. And that's how the blockchain is created. So that doesn't use any energy because other than, you know, people having their computer on like they normally would. So, and, and everything is moving in that direction. It's better for a lot of reasons, but that's one thing that people don't fundamentally understand. The other one is I've had some problems with the comparisons because the, com the comparison I've heard is like, oh, it uses as much energy as Sweden. Okay, but that's not a good comparison. We're not comparing apples to apples. We're comparing apples to Orange or to Lake Michigan. And that's a bad comparison. That's a logical fallacy. So if we want to make an accurate comparison, well, how much does cryptocurrency versus fiat currency, how much energy does that use? Now, that would be a valid comparison because would those transactions on cryptocurrency, even if they're using a lot of energy, what if that's way less, even if everybody switched over and was using nothing but crypto, if that was way less than the traditional banking industry, like then you would, you would want to do that, even if that would be better for the environment, even though it's using energy because it's using less energy than the other, than fiat currency. I don't know if that's the case or not. I, I, no one's, I haven't seen anything on it. No one, no one seems to have made that claim. But my point is, like, it's a bad argument because it's not comparing apples to apples. You're comparing apples to Lake Michigan, and that's the basis of a bad argument. So the the reason I want to bring that up because there's one more, the one more argument I'll make, and I'm not like reacting to something other than the general argument. But thirty percent of Bitcoin mining is done on renewable energies, and there's a big reason for that because your profit margin is determined by your energy costs. So if you can have free energy through renewables, you want to do that. Like the more you can do that, the better, because you're making more money. And I'm actually kind of surprised it's only 30%, because I, I think it'll be higher in the long run. Now tell, show me another industry. And I challenge anyone to do this. If you can point it, leave, it, leave a comment in the link, and I'll happily pin it to the top. Show me another industry that uses 30% renewables. Oh, wait, <laughs> you know, please find one because I, I don't know where it is. I don't think anybody's doing it. I always hear the argument for the environment when it comes to crypto, but I don't hear that same argument for why we shouldn't do other things. Like no one, no one's really like, hey, you should stop driving gasoline powered cars because they pollute the environment. Everyone keeps doing it. Right. So so it's kind of like, oh, I don't do crypto. So crypto is bad because it's bad for the environment. But I do. I, I drive a car. So I drive a gas car. So. So that's okay. Now, now the government. Now that should be the government's problem or whatever. So I, I kind of have a problem with that, just just in that fundamental sense. But to me, the biggest argument is the fact that 
the argument is based on the idea of proof of stake. And that's like, that's like a thing of the past. It's becoming a thing of the past. So I don't think it's a very valid argument. Anyway, um, I know there's other stuff, other stuff comes up and I just find them amusing, but these are three things I wanted to highlight. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' comments. Are there stupid things you hear about crypto all the time that you make you want to pull your hair out? I don't have that much left starting to go. So, you know, I prefer people didn't make me pull my hair out if, if possible. Uh, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you guys are hearing too and what your, some of your thoughts are on this topic. Otherwise, uh, I'm FrugalBC and I will see you in the future.